this video, we're going to be setting up a little bit more feedback for the user when they interact with our application. So what we'll set up is Angular NGX alerts. And what, what it's going to look like is this. We're going to actually have it pop out from the right side. Like uh, they have options you could change, like you could have it uh, come from the right or the left. So this is exactly what we're uh, setting up. Also, you could pass in messages and change the message here to anything you want. Uh, so if we go back to here, uh, this is very similar to what we did in the last uh, video. We, we installed um, a package, and then we went and we set it up. We, we imported it into our shared module. Uh, so we'll knock these two things out first. And if you go to this link right here, this link will be down in the description. Um, if you click on that, you'll end up on this page right here. This shows you how to install it and also bring it into your, your modules. So let's get this installing a while. So I'll just copy this part right here and jump back here in the command line in your spa. Uh, just paste and install. And while that's installing, we'll open up our shared module. We'll set that up. So we'll go into our shared folder and I'll close this down and open up the shared module. And then back here, we'll just copy and paste. I'm going to copy this whole top section and then I'm just going to edit, like get rid of the comments and things like that. Get rid of uh, one of the imports there so copy this go back here again and throw that up here give it some space and I don't need this and also don't need this line right here because I'm already importing that and get rid of this comment and this as well and that that is what you're looking for so uh, now we want to bring this into our imports I'll just copy and paste again so go back here and you want it to look exactly like this. So copy, go back here again. And in our imports, right here towards the end. Okay, so as you can see here, you could change some of these options by um, uh, changing this. Like you could have it on the left side instead of the right. I'm gonna leave it on the right. Actually, I think that's gonna look good on the right. So we'll try that out. Uh, so now that that is done, Let's go back to our checklist. So we go back to here. And then now that we set these two up, now we need to set it up within our header component. And you could probably put in almost any component like your home, your, your main page component or your main layout component. You probably could get away with putting it in there. I'm gonna put it in the header component. The reason is, is that's gonna be in every page of the application. So I'll always know that we'll have that messaging system uh, being pulled in. So let's open up our header component. If we go back here and back in our components, we actually did this in the last video as well. We added this ng progress bar. Now we'll just add on to that and they show you in the documentation on how to do that as well. So if we go back to here and we go down and right here, copy this and we'll bring that into our headers and paste it. Okay, and that's all we need to do in our header. Save this. So now we're actually ready to start using it. And all you need to do is just bring in your service like, like they're doing here. And then you just call these methods and they give you uh, four methods you could call. You can even pass in like, uh, you know, HTML like they're doing here. Uh, let's go and uh, set up our login component first. Inside of the login component, control P and then login component. And there it is and I'll close this down. So the first thing we need to do is bring it into our constructor like we did with the progress bar. And they show you that in the documentation. Go back here and just copy this one right here. Paste that right inside the constructor. I'll put this on a new line. Make sure you bring it in from our NGX alerts. And sometimes I need to give this a nudge again. For some reason, it gives me an error here. So, okay, took care of that. And it's bringing, being brought in right here. Now we should have access to all these methods here. Uh, let's call one of them and they have them right here in the documentation. So right when the user clicks on the button to log in the form, I'll use the info me method to let them know that we're working on logging them in. Copy this, go back here, throw that right at the top, right when the method gets called. And I'll just add any message here. It doesn't really matter. You can add in whatever you want. Info, okay. And then I'll add uh, something like this, but instead of the info, we'll use the success when we successfully log the user in. 
I'm going to move this to the top, actually. Let's cut this out of here. And I'll throw that next line right here. So when we successfully log in, we're going to use the success method. Copy this. Go back here and throw that in here. And I'll give a message like user logged in. Logged in. Oh, that's good. And then here we'll, we'll give them a danger uh, method if uh, there was an error. So go back here again, copy this, go back here and paste that right here. And then here I'll put unable to log in. Okay, so this should be working if we save this. Let's check our login method, make sure this is working before we implement it into the rest of our .ts files. Go back here and open this up open up the login page and I'll just put in any information for now. That's great. You could click on these to close them down. And then if we put in valid information, one, two, three, four, and then hit login, the green works great. Now that these are all working, let's go open up the rest of our TS files and add these in, in the rest of these. So open this one up, this one up, also the register and the reset password. Like I did in the last video, I'm just gonna time lapse this because all I gotta do is copy and paste uh, this into all our other methods and I'll be back in one second. Okay, so all the TS files are looking good. So if we go back to the change password component, this is what this looks like. And keep in mind, you'll find all these snippets down in the description. If you click on a link called snippets, you could just copy and paste all these instead of typing all this out. And then here's the confirm email component. That's what this looks like. And the register component. And here's the reset password component. So let's check this out in the browser, make sure everything's working. So I already have this set up. So we already tested the login uh, form. So let's go and check out the register form. And I'll enter in uh, a username that already exists in the database. So we should get back an error. And we did, so unable to create an account. Good, that's we're all working. Uh, let's check out our reset password. And yes, reset password. And yes, uh, check email to change password, good. And if we go and we check our email, click on this and yes I would like to reset my password and we'll reset the password one two three four five okay and change password and we'll get a message for that great now there's one thing I would like to change though if we go back to here and let's do this again you can put in anything there so I like to be a little bit more descriptive in here and there's a way we could do that I don't know if it's going to be overkill because later on we are going to be adding form validation and we might have messages that will show up underneath here. It might be overkill, but for now, let's be more descriptive on what's going on here. And the way to do that, if we go and open up the console and we're logging out the error whenever we get an error here and, and inside of our, uh, our error here, we get a property called error. If we go and take a look in here, there's another property called errors. And this is an array of errors. 
So let's go and dig into there and display the first thing we get in this array. It doesn't really matter like um, if there's anything in this array, we, we just want to show it to them, you know. So let's go back here. And if we go back to our register component and inside of here, this is where we're displaying the error. So we'll just say error or ERR uh, for this right here. Then if you remember inside there, there was another property called error. Then inside that property, there's an array called errors. And we want to just grab the first thing out of that array and, and show uh, and show what's inside that array. And we actually want to show the description. If we go back here and inside the array, there's a code. And uh, that's not really descriptive. I don't want to show that. I want to show the description. So just copy this and go back here and paste it. I'm a big fan of copying and pasting so I don't spell things wrong. Okay, let's save that. Let's test that make sure that's working. And we go back here and we'll put in a uh, username that already exists and we can put in anything in here. So username Mike already existed, good. And then we could go and change this and email uh, already exists. Okay, good. Okay, so we got a nice uh, messaging system of good user feedback. Now in the next video, we're gonna start working on actually fixing this up here. This was just temporary, the way we set up these links up here. What we're gonna do is move it off to the right here and we'll have a drop down where the user can go in and uh, edit their account or change the password. We'll have a bunch of links for them there. Uh, we'll work on that in the next video. So I'll see you then. Thank you.